We're here in the Sea of Cortez, which is really a marine paradise. People come here to see the wildlife, enjoy the beaches, see whale sharks. But I came here just for the bats. So there is another marine mammal that people often forget, which is the Mexican fishing bat. And this is a bat that's completely adapted for life at sea. And so while it lives on land during the day, at night they go out over the open ocean and try to catch fish and shrimp. They are truly a marine mammal, and I'm here to study these bats. I'm hoping to bring awareness to their amazing behaviors and help spur conservation. Because it is a threatened species that's living on these islands that are vulnerable to many different threats. So I've been coming to this island for the past three years. This is my field site for my PhD, and it's also the largest known roost of these bats. I'm trying to understand how this bat goes out over the ocean and finds fish. So we've been trying to use multiple steps to get at this question. Uh, the first is to actually put GPS tags on the bats and really see where they go. To get any GPS data about bats, first you have to capture them. Early in the morning we come to where the bats live. It's these slopes of loose rocks. We walk around and then we listen carefully and say, okay, I think there are some bats under here. And then we start to uncover the rocks and usually we find a couple of individuals. Then we take the bats back to our campsite. And from there we measure them, make sure they're nice and healthy, and then we attach GPS trackers to them. Then we bring them back to their roost site. We let them go early in the day so that they can have some time to recuperate from the stress of being captured. And then eventually the sun starts to set, the island cools down a bit, and the magic happens. The bats start to emerge. They have to wait until it's completely dark because there's a lot of predators around that are trying to snag them as they come out. It's absolutely incredible that they're able to manage such an insane task of going out and finding fish in the ocean. Especially because they're restricted to catching fish right at the surface. So somehow these bats know where fish are that happen to rest right at the surface of the water. When he'll fly around and try to catch fish, he's going to drag his feet and tail membrane through the water. And if anything touches their feet, they scoop it up into their mouth and eat while flying. From the GPS data, it seems to take between one hour and eight hours. It's extremely variable. But once they're full, then they come back and spend the day in the roost. And so then we come back the next day, and using radio telemetry, we can track the bats and find exactly the individuals we want, and recover the tags and get all the information that we need. We can see the bats flying 40, 50 kilometers away from the island in a night. That's just straight line distance from the island. Uh, they'll often fly over 100 kilometers on their entire route. And they stop at multiple sites searching for fish. It also appears that the bats don't really know where their food's gonna be. From the GPS tracks, they seem to go to different places each night, which implies that they can't just return to the same place over and over again. They cover such a huge area that being able to watch them forage is pretty impossible in the field. So what we do as well is we set up a flight cage on the island and put a little pool inside of it. And from that, we have a more confined view of how bats actually explore their environment and respond to water. We're trying to see how the bats detect prey and also record the exact calls that they use when they try to catch a prey item. So the third part of the research is actually trying to get out and see what it is like near where the bats are foraging. And we're actually sampling the number of fish using nets and also recording with ultrasonic microphones the number of bats that are around. So far, the bats seem full, yet every time we throw a net, we get nothing. So uh, they definitely know something we don't. I never in my wildest dreams imagined that I would be here studying bats on a desert island. You know, even in the hardest times when, you know, the sun's beating down on me, we've been lifting rocks for hours each day. It's an incredible experience. We're in a beautiful place and we're working with such a fascinating species. 
So as Baja becomes a more popular place for people to visit, it brings a lot of problems such as overfishing and potentially people bringing invasive species with them that can really impact these environments. And so it's really important that while we want to enjoy this place, we also need to be respectful and try to conserve the area. Being able to see very precisely where individuals go could give us even more power in saying that we really need to protect certain regions because they're being used by endangered species. With the research that I'm doing on Mexican fishing bats, I'm hoping to bring awareness to their amazing behavior and help spur conservation that will ensure that these bats can go out fishing each night for years to come.